All right, everybody, just wanted to start out this video. This is going to be an install of the Garrett PowerMax Turbo onto the 2.8 Duramax. This is my truck. It's a 2018. It is pretty much stock. The only thing I got is like a K and drop in filter, but it's got the stock intake on it and everything. But here we go. Here's going to be the dive in here and figure this thing out. Truck's got like 52,000 miles on it. Uh, the only other thing done to it is it's tuned by myself with uh, HP tuners. Okay, making some progress. Got the airbox out and the hot side pipe from the, to the intercooler off. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of room in here, but some of these bolts are going to be hard to get to. I didn't, uh, I'm not going to film a whole lot of this, it's just going to be update videos, but um, if you can't make it this far, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Alright, next update, got the wheels off of it, if you drop it down, got the fender liner out, so we can get some access in there to these bolts. This heat shield that was on here, kind of a pain, there's only three bolts holding it in, this back one. Uh, it's one of them bolts that's like way too long for the application and it's kind of hard to reach because there's a wiring harness right there But just take your time you'll get it out and the man or the heat shield itself is Got a piece on it, it Turns down here Underneath the turbo and it kind of gets in your way, but you got to bend it a little bit finagle it out But it'll come out all right, making some more progress. I got the heat shield off the cat and the O2 knock sensor thing out. There's four bolts on the heat shield around the cat. One there, another one there, one over there, and then there's one. It's like on the top behind, or no, it's up here at the top here. So, I uh, got the four bolts off the turbo. Uh, the one behind on the back is kind of a pain, but I learned that a uh, four inch extension with a, just a deep well, you can fish it back behind here and get it pretty easily. Uh, it's not too terrible. So, I uh, got the four bolts, or all the bolts off the bottom. I'm gonna pull this cat out. There is one bolt bracket uh, that bolts it to the motor. I don't know if I can really see it. It's right there. But uh, I'm about to pull it out. It's the only thing holding this thing on right now. Uh, like I said, I went ahead and took this O2 knock sensor thing out. Uh, left the EGTs in there. There's two of them. Another one in the bottom there. But uh, I just left them in there but I unplugged them. I'm going to pull it out with it and I'll come back when I get it out. Okay another update. Not pulling a cat out. Looks like I can get it out or get the turbo out without it. I just got a zip tied up over here out of the way. All the bolts are out of it. Top and bottom but I'm just gonna leave it in there it's a pain these top bolts you got to pull the studs out with it because there is not enough room for this turbo to slide down far enough to get uh, to get the studs out so I got most of the lines off I just pinched this one off here um, coolant line uh, I took the one out of the block uh, poured coolant everywhere, of course. My reservoir is empty. That's neat. Uh, but I got all the oil lines off, or the top oil line off, feed line. Still got the pressure, or the return line, I should say, on there. But I'm going to try to slide it out of the block when I pull the turbo out. Because those bolts are tight. Uh, the last bolts I got are the one in the back there on the turbo. That's coming from the bottom. 
those are seeming to be a pretty big pain to reach can't really see it but they're kind of we'll see we'll see if I can get it out all right got the turbo out as you can see there is a couple ports here this one here is the coolant feed and then coolant return goes right into the uh, reservoir here uh, this one down here with the fitting on it is the oil feed and the green one is the oil return and that bolt there just next to the oil feed fitting is just a bracket that supports the turbo but there's the cat still wired up still in there these uh two top bolts are the back ones they have studs as well luckily when i pulled the nuts off the studs came with it but uh there it is so you can get it out fairly easily. wasn't too bad. There's the old unit. Like I said, these two back bolts, the ones up against the block, actually it'd be these two and these two back bolts. Um, you can get them off with just a regular combination wrench. It's a 13 mil, no big deal. Here's the studs, the other two studs that come up the top. Uh, those come out. It's got the inverted torques on the end. It's an E7. Um, but yeah, I'm going to strip all these parts off of this and uh, start throwing them on the new one. Alright, I got everything swapped over as far as the lines go. Left them a little bit loose, but the new turbo comes with new studs. I pulled those out. Here's the difference in the compressor wheel. You can see this is like a, what is that, eight blades? Yeah, eight blades, and this one's like a niner. Uh, I haven't actually measured the difference. Uh, I don't know the stock size of this one, but I did measure this wheel. And it's like a 42, yeah, 42 or 50. There's maybe it's 52. I don't remember. But you can see it's uh, based on the GT17 uh, compressor wheel, so it's basically a GT17 compressor wheel on this turbo. But I'm gonna get it thrown in there, bolt it up. The back side's the same, as far as I know. Uh, it says on their website that it's the same. But anywho, let's get going. All right, another update. Got the new one bolted on. It's fully bolted on. Got all the lines on it. Coolant lines, oil feed, return. Uh, getting ready to work on. I got forgot to take the bracket off of the other turbo but it goes to the block there and then I can hook up the exhaust and from there making progress though I'll be back in a few all right finally the sun's getting out of my face it's cooling off but I got the exhaust on there heat shields on it I'll bolt it up. I got that little bracket in there and uh, bottom side's bolted up too. All the sensors are plugged in so pretty much done under here. Put this fender liner back in and then the top side. Alright, got the wheels back on it. Fender liner's on it. I uh, got the heat shield on the top side and that uh, EGT put in uh, pretty much getting close to wrapping this up I got some coolant to put in it um, but yeah pretty much just uh, the hot pipe and the intake and we're done all right I did want to showcase another part that I'm putting on here this is from uh, sasquatchparts.com this is basically this is the part that goes into the turbo and hooks to this it replaces this uh, flexible stock flexible one uh, apparently these are pretty prone to it's actually really thin but uh, 
I guess they're prone to cracking and breaking. So it was like 30, 40 bucks, whatever, for this whole kit. So I just bought it and I'm gonna throw it on there. See how it does. All right. Got her all buttoned up. Everything's back together. I still need to purge the coolant out, but I haven't done the first start yet. Uh, kind of see it. Not much to really show. As you probably know, this thing's packed down there pretty good. But it's got a little fitting right there on the top. That's for a speed sensor. But if you look, it's going to hit the, uh, the heat shield there. Get a better shot at it. But it's going to touch the heat shield if you put one in. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, pretty simple install. The hardest part was... Uh, on the heat shield that back bolt getting that thing in there just because that wiring harness is right in the way but everything else wasn't too bad um, this is a two-wheel drive model so I didn't have to deal with the axle and stuff underneath the front I was able to get underneath there uh, relatively easily I don't have a bunch of uh, skid plates and stuff in the way so I didn't have to mess with any of that but um, yeah uh, let me uh, grab my laptop, we'll flash a tune in it, and uh, see how she does. Alright everybody, first start. Sounds pretty stock, which uh, I was expecting for now. I don't have an exhaust on this or anything, but... Pretty much that. There is one piece I forgot to tell you about. This. It's kind of a weird looking piece. But. Let's see, I mean. It's got these veins in it or whatever. But it goes inside this fender in here and attaches to the air box. I pulled it out not sure it's really going to gain anything but to get it out you're going to have to pull the inner fender well out but we'll see maybe it'll just make it louder if it makes it louder I'll be happy but also if anybody wants to see anything about that leave a comment but yeah no leaks let's get it warmed up Check this coolant one more time, we'll go for a drive. Alright. I prefer HP tuners. I've used both EFI Live and HP tuners on this. Um, EFI Live basically does the exact same thing. Um, except it has a couple more parameters you can log. Um, but besides that, first impressions of this turbo is it's pretty loud. If you like loud, that's good. If not, then you might want to reconsider, but I'll shut up and I'll let you listen to it. Just putting around the neighborhood here. find a place to get a uh, full throttle rip all right so with the windows up and the AC on it's really not too bad you can barely hear it when it's transitioning from on throttle to off throttle uh, full throttle it's pretty quiet it's about like stock not gonna lie 
uh, but the lower speed stuff and the transitioning you can hear it um, I'm gonna pull out on this road here in a second as soon as this car passes and we'll floor it but yeah uh, as far as it goes I still gotta look at the tune log and figure out how much mass flow I could tell just by looking at the gauges I'm already over what the stock one was I don't know about how much yet I'll have to do a follow-up video um, or I guess drop a comment below if you want me to do a follow-up video on tuning but here we go full throttle pretty stock pulls a little bit harder but I gotta look at the logs to see how much how much harder we're talking and I'll let you know all right everybody so here's the data log that I pulled from that drive um, as you can see look pretty good across there a lot better than what it was stock here is uh, all the airflow numbers here you can see I have map uh, minus barometric so 198 kpa in the manifold uh i think there's a thing with hp tuners that it flat lines at 300 kpa which minus barometric makes it 198 but um so hp tuners can't read above that which is like 28 psi a boost um, it flat lines it at that part so or at that point so um, but it's actually maintaining it um, before this uh, yellow line used to fall off at about 2800 rpms and now you can see I'm all the way up here at 36 and it's still flat line and meaning I can rev this thing out even further this white line is mass airflow and you can see it looks like I'm surging uh, during the shift so I need to raise my uh, shift points it's starting it ends the surge at about 2900 rpm so i'm going to move this to about 3000 uh, when it shifts it's going to pull it down to about 3000 um, so make some adjustments there uh, using a lot of fuel this is i mean we're at like 1500 uh, mm3 per second um, over here so that's the most i've ever seen out of this i'm running about 20 degrees of timing probably way too much but uh, you can see down here I'm logging this is just a math uh, math number but it's it's close to uh, how much horsepower this is making uh, 242 is the biggest number I've ever seen out of this um, maybe if I can rev it out further I can make a little bit more but we'll see let me make some adjustments uh, like I said, if you guys want me to make another video about tuning this thing, um, just drop a comment below. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it in this video. This one's already running pretty long. So, um, yeah, if you want to see more, just drop a comment and uh, I'll do another video. But uh, all in all, I feel like this uh, this turbo is a pretty good, pretty good buy for the money. And the horsepower you're going to gain. I see a lot of people spending a lot more money on deletes and stuff like that. And I don't really condone deletes. First off, it's illegal. And if you get caught with it, you're going to get fined. But um, you're really not getting that much power out of doing a delete. Um, yeah, you might not have to uh, buy a DEF or DPF and uh, FCR and all that stuff. But, you know, if you tune it right, um, I'm not saying I'm a professional tuner by any means. But if you tune it on the lean side of things, you should be able to uh, play it safe. Um, I don't know if this is the lean side of things, but um, I'm working on that. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a, a great deal. Uh, I like stock replacement or stock looking parts on this. So that's why I still have a factory intake. Um, this turbo looks stock. Um, the only other thing I have done to this is I've replaced the map sensor with a, a four bar. But like I said, HP tuners is lacking in that department. Maybe I can hook up my EFI Live and it'll read higher. I haven't tried that yet. But uh, all in all, I think uh, this is a uh, worth the money. And anybody looking to get some power out of it, I think this is a good 
good purchase. So please leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, and that'll be it for this video. Thanks, guys.